Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be looking at difference of projections. Right? So, in the previous video, we already know what is the result. The result here tells us that if we have two projections P1 and P2, where uh, uh, the space Y1 is contained in the space Y2, then the difference is known as a projection. And this is a projection where this P operator, the difference operator, maps all of the Hilbert space onto Y, where what is Y? Y is the orthogonal complement of Y1 in Y2. Right? So, this thing. Now let's have a look at its proof. In the first part, we have to prove if and only if part. So that means we have to prove both ways. Firstly, we'll assume that P is a projection and we will prove that Y1 is contained in Y2. In this case, let's assume P as a projection. So according to definition, if it is a projection, it is both idempotent and self-adjoint. This is according to the definition right? that we have studied. It is both idempotent and self-adjoint. So now because it is idempotent, so we could write P square is equal to P. And what is P in this case? P is given to be the difference operator P2 minus P1. So we could write this as P2 minus P1 square that is equal to P2 minus P1. We could open up this square thing, the operator, two operators multiplied together. So it would be P2 square minus P2 P1 minus P1 P2 plus P1 square. Now both of these them they are not equal why because they are the operator multiplication the, the, this is the composition right so we cannot just simply say they are both both of them they are equal right they are not okay now also p1 and p2 they are given to be projections so that means both of them are also idempotent if they are idempotent what does that mean it means p1 square would be equal to p1 and p2 square would be equal to p2 right so instead of this p2 square we could write p2 and instead of this p1 square we could write p1 here so you could see here clearly that this p2 and this p2 cancels with each other and uh, you could shift this uh, p1 to this side and both of these term to the right hand side so that you would have p1 p2 plus p2 p1 is equal to two times of p1 let's mark this as equation number one now in this equation we can multiply with p2 both from the left and from the right so when we multiply it from the left we have this condition and we mul when we multiply it from the right we have this condition right so here if you see again we could replace this p2 square by p2 again p2 square by p2 right so let's see what do we have we have p2 p1 p2 so this thing uh, one one term would cancel with this one term so you are left with by simple calculation you have this term and this term over here so you could have a look this was our term right so it is P2, P1, P2. One term cancels here. So you are left with P2, P1. In this case, this is P2, uh, P1, P2. This term here and one terms here cancels with this one. When you replace this P2 square with P2. Why? Because this is an idempotent. P2 is an idempotent operator. Right? Okay. So from both of these expressions, you can uh, see that P2, P1, P2, that is nothing but equal to P2, P1 and P1, P2. So that means both of these quantities from these equations, it tells us that both these quantities, they are equal to each other. And moreover, if we use this result in equation 1, now because both of them, they are equal. So that means 2 times of any of these is equal to 2 times of P1. So from here, we obtain that. 2 times of p1 p2 that is equal to 2 times of p1 so that clearly tells us that p2 p1 is equal to p1 p2 is equal to p1 so this is the condition that we obtained from this case whenever we have assumed that the difference operator p2 minus p1 is a projection but in this case what do we uh, require to prove we are required to prove that y1 is contained in y2 now this thing is there uh, is, uh, is obtained straightly from this result using the result that we have studied this theorem so according to this theorem all the statements are equivalent whenever we have this condition this condition is automatically there so uh, this condition p2 p1 equal to p2 p1 p2 is equal to p1 clearly uh, gives us that y1 is contained in y2 so this is one way of the result 
in the converse part we assume that y1 is contained in y2 right then we have to prove that the difference operator p that is p2 minus p1 that is a projection operator in order to prove this as a projection what what is required it uh, it is required that p square is equal to p so stating that p is idempotent and moreover this p should be self adjoint in nature if both these conditions are there we are done we can say that the given operator would act as a projection operator right so here in order to prove the idempotency in this case let's go and see its reverse steps the steps we have done in this uh, above part so let's have a look here we assume that y1 is contained in y2 then uh, if that is so according to this result here if y1 is contained in y2 we have this result right so we have p2 p1 is equal to p1 p2 is equal to p1 if that is so so it implies that if we add p1 p2 plus p2 p1 it would be two times of p1 according to this condition right so here we will be again repeating the steps in the reverse order so what would be there now we have this condition right according to this condition we have obtained this condition now we will uh, just add p2 and p1 on both sides right and expand p1 then we could replace this p2 by p2 square and this p1 by p1 square then we could club up all the terms to make it a square so we would reach at a idempotent operator let's see and have a look so this was our condition we could add we could write p this two times of p1 is p1 plus p1 and we could add this p2 and p2 on both sides so we have this term now you could replace this p1 by p1 square why because p1 is an idempotent operator this p2 by p2 square why because it is an idempotent operator now you could club all these terms so this would these terms would make it p2 minus p1 square right hand side is as such now you see what is this this is p square is equal to p so that tells us that p is an idempotent operator right so one part is done for the next part if you have p1 and p2 as self adjoint operators so clearly the difference is a self adjoint operator this is in according in accordance with the properties of self adjointness so you could review the properties of self adjoint operators so according to this because your difference operator is both self adjoint as well as idempotent that means the given operator the difference operator is a projection so we are done with part a now let's have a look at our second part in the second part what what is required to be proved we are required to prove that this projection operator p projects whole of the given hilbert space onto y where what is this y that is the orthogonal complement of y1 in y2 right so we have to prove that the image space is nothing but y2 intersection with y1 complement so we wanted to prove that the difference operator projects h onto v where what is this v y2 intersection with y1 complement and so here we could rename the terms so the projection of whole of the hilbert space we could name it as y and we wanted to prove that that this y is nothing but this v only right so that that would prove that this projection is nothing but it is the orthogonal complement of y1 in y2 right so uh, here in this case all the vectors of the form y is equal to px where what is p p is p2 minus p1 so where x is some element of h they are all members of this y right so this is the notation let's mark it as equation number 2 now from the part 1 because we are assuming that this p is a projection if that is so then the space y1 would be contained in the space y2 there is no issue in this one and moreover from the previous result because y1 is contained in y2 let's have a look again at this theorem because y1 is contained in y2 therefore we have this condition that p2 p1 is equal to p1 p2 is equal to p1 so let's uh, have this condition here from this condition we have p2 p1 is equal to p1 now from this condition and from equation 2 
using this notation here let's see what do we have we could have we have p2y instead of y what we can write y instead of y we could write p2x minus p1x so we have p2x minus p1x you could open up the brackets so it is p2 square minus p2 p1x what is p2 square it is p2 only why because p2 is a projection and it is idempotent p2 p1 is p1 why because using this condition here right so if you see what is this p2x minus p1x this p2x minus p1x that is nothing but your y again using equation 2 so from here you obtain that p2y is equal to y so what does this tell us about y so it shows that y is a member of y2 because here the projection p2 is keeping y as such so that means the projection p2 is acting as an identity for y and it could only be there whenever we pick some element from y2 so that means y has to be a member of the space y2 right so this is one thing y is contained in the space y2 now we wanted to prove that y is contained in y1 complement right so that means uh, if that is there so it would be there in their intersection as well okay so let's see from equation number 2 and from equation number 3 here let's pick equation number 2 here and equation number 3 here using both of these results we have p1y now what is y y is p2x minus p1x right we could open up the brackets p1 p2 again using the result here p p1 p2 is e is equal to p1 right using this result again <coughs> excuse me using p1 p2 is equal to p1 and p1 square as p1 we have p1x minus p1x so that is nothing but zero so from here you obtain p1y is equal to zero so that means y is a member of the null space for the projection operator p1 and so if y belongs to the null space for the projection operator so that means what is this null space of projection operator it is nothing but y1 complement this is in according to the previous result that you have studied if y belongs to this space and we have also proved y belongs to y2 so that means y would be a member of their intersection and we have named this intersection as v so that means y we we consider some element y from capital y and now this y is a member of v where this y was taken as an arbitrary member so that means y is a subspace for the space v now in order to make them equal we wanted to prove that y contains v as well so that means in this case we'll Uh, consider some element v and we'll show that that is a member of y right so let's see now because we are saying the projection of h on to y1 complement what is that if you remember we uh, whenever we were writing about the direct sum of two projections the complement space would be i minus p kind right so in this case whenever we are talking about the y1 complement it is i minus p1 space so that means for every v which is a member of capital v that is of this form that is written in this form i minus p1 times y2 where what is this y2 y2 is a member of the space capital y2 right and moreover using the result that p2 p1 is equal to p1 we obtain from equation 4 that pv is equal to p2 minus p1 i minus p1 times y2 so in order to show that this v when we have taken it from capital v it now belongs to capital y we wanted to prove here in this case that p of v is equal to v why because what is this y y is the range space for the projection operator p where what is this p p is p2 minus p1 right so here we consider pv we expand p as p2 minus p1 and we expand this v as i minus p1 times of y2 so now we could multiply the uh, these two operators 
so we would obtain p2 minus p1 minus p2 p1 plus p1 square right so we could multiply it with y2 so in terms here we have p2 y2 minus p2 p1 y2 minus p1 y2 plus p1 y2 by uh, instead of this p1 square we are writing this as p1 right because p1 being a projection is an idempotent operator so this term here cancels with this term so you are left with these terms right also this p2 y2 is equal to y2 only why because y2 if you remember is a member for from the space capital y2 and the projection operator p2 would act as an identity for all the elements y which are taken from this space y2 this is the result of the projection operator so that means this p2 y2 could be written as y2 so you have y2 in, and instead of p2 p1 you could write p1 here according to the previous result so you have y2 minus p1 p, uh, p1 y2 so what is this thing this is nothing but i minus p1 times of y2 and what is this this is v so here you obtain that pv is equal to v so what does it tell you about v it tells us that v because it was an arbitrary member now it is a member of y we initially taken we uh, we initially took this v from capital v and now this is a member of capital y so that means being an arbitrary member the whole of this space v is contained in the space y so that means from this uh, containment and from the containment that we have proved earlier together they tell uh, you that this uh, y is equal to v and what is this v it was it was the orthogonal complement of y1 in y2 so this is what we wanted to prove here in this part so i hope you understood the proof here the proof was quite simple well that is it for this video thank you for watching